everybody, today I'm going to be talking you through some of the things I have been absolutely loving through January and there are quite a lot because I didn't actually do a December favourites because I had all the videos going on and it would have technically been a January video but I did my 2015 favourites instead blah de blah de blah Okay, so I'm going to get started because I have a lot of things to get through and I don't know about you but I haven't got hours and hours to chat through them even though we all know I could quite happily and easily do that. Back in January I went and had a little mooch around Boots and Superdrug um, at the foundations particularly because I really like trying foundations. It's the sort of thing that you apply once um, for the day and you get a really good indication of whether or not it's going to be a good foundation. Um, unlike skincare, which of course you need to trial for a while. Um, so I picked this up um, and this is the Rimmel Lasting Finish um, Skin Perfecting Full Coverage Foundation. Now, um, I love Rimmel foundations. I think they're possibly my favourite kind of high street foundation. I really like Wake Me Up and I really like Lasting Perfection. So Lasting Finish was one I hadn't tried, so I was really interested to see if this was just as good and I was massively impressed. In January, I feel like my skin looks a little bit, I guess just a little bit lifeless, like it's not had any sun for a while, um, I feel like I look quite pale, um, so I needed, I kind of wanted something with a little bit more coverage than I would normally go for, and I feel like this is perfect. It lasts longer than the other two Rimmel foundations that I've tried and the overall coverage is really great, it blends really nicely and I just feel like it looks great on the skin. They also have a really good range of shades, there's not just like three shades to choose from, there's quite a lot um, which is why uh, Rimmel is always kind of my go-to for high street foundations but I've been thoroughly impressed with this. I've pretty much used it every single day in January. Next up I have been really loving nude lips. I say this with a super dark purple lip, but um, I have been wearing nude lips a lot more through January. I'm not too sure why, I think it's because I've gone slightly smoky on the eyes, um, but there have been three uh, lip sticks in particular that I have been absolutely loving. This first one is the Wild About Beauty Lip Pencil Duo, which I actually used in my makeup look. And it's this kind of gorgeous, oh my goodness, look at that, it's completely ruined just like pfft, smudged it all over my lips. It is possibly the more kind of muted shade of all the ones I have. It's very natural, um, but also, I don't know, I just, I like what my lips look like when I wear this. And I really like that you have the pencil, like the big fat kind of lipstick crayon one end, and then you've got the lip pencil the other end, which still isn't a fine, pencil so you can kind of shade this in a bit with that but I, I really really like that and the staying power is also very good. The next one I have been loving is this one which is the Charlotte Tilbury Miss Kensington. It, it's a very similar colour, it's more of kind of like a muted pinky um, nude and I just really, really like it. What's... Ooh. Ooh. It's not particularly shiny on the lips, which I think is why I like it, um, because I feel like it stays a little bit longer, um, but it also looks really, really lovely with lip gloss on top, so I have been loving that one. And the last one I have been absolutely loving is this one, which I think I have featured before somewhere, and it is the Ciate Olivia Palermo shade in Cashmere. Really, again, very beautiful, kind of browny, pinky nude. Um, very similar to the other ones, to be fair. Very, very similar. This one's just slightly more brown in tone. Just seem to be be loving all those nudes. <laughs> Makes me sound like a right pervert. This next makeup product is a Becca highlighter. I have heard some great things about Becca highlighters. Over the Christmas New Year time, I did a massive uh, cult beauty order, so I had like little, some makeup bits in there and I also had a lot of skincare, which obviously I have been trying out and I've got some bits to show you in a bit. Um, but one of those things was this highlighter because a lot of people had raved about them. Um, and this is the, what's this one called? Moonstone highlighter. Oh my goodness, this is 
amazing. It just looks incredible on and it's just a really gorgeous colour. It's like a kind of pinky, like it's got like a pinky peach undertone to it and it's so soft and so easy to blend and oh my goodness, just perfection in a powder. Love it. The next thing I've been loving is this perfume, which I actually got in my Liberty Beauty advent calendar over Christmas, and it is the Oi or 013. Now, I don't actually know if this is the same brand that make my other um, perfume, which is the Molecule 01. It comes in like this little green case which makes it perfect to travel with. I think you can wear this whether you are a man or a woman. It's that kind of scent. It's very fresh. It's very... Oh, I don't know. I can't... Oh, I'm so bad at describing scents. All I can tell you is I absolutely love this. I'm obsessed with it. And I think it smells amazing. It would... It kind of works for daytime, but I also think it works very well for like evenings if you want something a bit heavier. Darker, smokiest shades of vetiver oil are removed, leaving leaving a smooth, woody, and slightly grassy smell. Now, I don't know if any of you feel that that sounds like something you would want to wear, but I think it smells incredible. When it comes to bath time, I have been using two products um, quite a lot recently. This one I picked up in Space NK just before Christmas, and this is the Grown Alchemist Pearl Peppermint and Ylang Ylang Body Exfoliant. I had never actually tried anything from Grown Alchemist before. They have quite a varied selection of products and you can get them in Space NK and I think you can get them online. But I really liked the sound of this. I love the tube it's in. I don't know, I just quite like things in tubes like this. Although don't squeeze it when the cap's on because you take the cap off and it goes everywhere. Oh, it kind of smells like a mixture between a toothpaste and a spa, if that makes any sense. I like it because it's very refreshing. I love the smell. This works so nice in the shower. Um, it's also very thin. I really love thick scrubs, um, ones that you can kind of scoop right out and you really can like buff into the skin. But sometimes I don't want something like that. Sometimes I want something that's a little bit lighter in consistency and I think that's where this works really well because it's like suspended in a gel rather than in like a paste. It's mostly for me, the scent of this is just beaut. If you like fresh scents or you want something in your shower to kind of wake you up a little bit whilst exfoliating your body, then you should definitely try this. It's really, really nice. I feel like I've just been like waving this around like a crazy woman. The next thing that I am completely obsessed with um, are these, which are the Therapy Himalayan Detox Salts by Rock O'Neill. I love baths. You guys know I love to have a bath. I probably have at least like two or three a week um, amongst showers, of course. Um, but these really kind of stood out to me as something I definitely wanted to try. Um, I'd never tried Himalayan bath salts before. Oh no, half of them have gone. I'm so sad. They smell so strong. Oh my goodness, they smell amazing. They smell like a spa. They smell like the best spa you've ever been to. So relaxing. Holy crap. Suspended in a base of Himalayan pink salt containing over 84 minerals, dusted with amethyst powder and infused with essential oils, these combine to create a potent trinity that helps your body to rebalance and release toxins on all levels whilst restoring a sense of inner serenity. A truly aromatherapeutic experience. The idea of these is that you sprinkle this in your bath, you lay in your bath for 10 to 20 minutes, you get out, you kind of relax on your bed. They do say online like um, not to touch any electricals um, and to just chill and you're almost guaranteed to have the best night's sleep that you have ever had. Um, it's actually uh, meant to be really good for people that struggle with sleep, that have um, insomnia and basically people who struggle with kind of stress or anxiety or just people that need to chill basically um, and every time I have used these I've had like the best night's sleep I've ever had so I like to use these after I've had a really busy day where I've kind of been a bit non-stop 
um, and I know that I've got the evening completely free. I'll go and soak in the bath, come out, lie on my bed, and then I'll pretty much fall asleep. Like, I don't wake up. I'm quite a light sleeper. Although I fall asleep quite early and quite easily, it doesn't take much to wake me up normally, and then I find it more difficult to fall back to sleep. But when I've used these, I feel like my sleep has been deeper somehow. So I think if any of you are struggling uh, to get to sleep, give these a try um, and let me know what you think. I personally love them, but then I love anything that you can put in your bath and I love sleep. So the two combined just make for the perfect product. Another thing I ordered from Cult Beauty because Caroline Hirons, who I'm always, always talking about because she is the queen of skincare and I will leave her blog below, as always, do go check it out. She recommended to use the Tata Harper Nourishing Oil Cleanser as a step one cleanser. So to remove your makeup, um, just to basically kind of break down all the grime and makeup before you then go on to uh, your second cleanse, which is to cleanse your skin. And I have loved using this. I feel like a, a small amount goes so far, but I don't feel like I'm tugging at my skin. Like, it's very, very gentle, especially around the eyes, because I've been wearing quite a lot of mascara recently, and I find that sometimes I can rub my eyes a little bit too hard with, with a balm. Um, but having used this, I, I don't know, I just feel like everything comes away so much easier. It also smells amazing. Like all Tata Harper products, um, it smells brilliant. It smells brilliant. All 100% natural, etc, etc. Another product I have been really loving are these, which are the Zellens PHA Plus Bio Peel Resurfacing Facial Pads. I always used to skip this step um, in my skincare routine and after reading Caroline's blog and hearing so many other people um, using acid toners or acid wipes um, as part of their skincare routine, I decided to start doing it properly. So I have only been using these for just over a month but I do feel like they've made such a difference to my skin and also my whole skincare routine um, because I think one of the main purposes of the kind of acid tone or acid wipe is to kind of prepare your skin for the rest of your skincare as well as obviously exfoliating your skin at the same time. Um, and, I, and I honestly think these have made the biggest difference um, to my skincare routine and to my skin. Plus they they smell amazing. I have quite a few different ones that I've been trying out but I think so far these are my favourites. And I've only got about 15 left, so I need to do an order for some more. Also been loving this, which is the MV Organic Skincare Rose Hydrating Mist. All skins and sensitive. So after I've been doing my acid wipe, I have then been going in with my spray, with my little mist, just to hydrate the skin. It says, this fragrant water soothes and hydrates even the most sensitive skin and is a must for air travel and air conditioned environments. Spritz any time throughout the day to refresh and hydrate the skin and soothe the senses. And I've just been really enjoying this one. It smells really good. Oh no, I'm halfway gone. Last skincare item is uh, something else that I ordered on Cult Beauty when I was having a little shop around. And this had a lot of really great reviews, so I wanted to give it a go. And it is the May Lindstrom Skin, the Problem Solver. I'd never tried any other products by May Lindstrom before, but I know of her and some of her other products. So every now and then I will have like a breakout of a lot of kind of big spots, like hormonal breakouts. So I'll get them on my chin, mostly kind of just in my T-zone. Um, and when my skin starts to get a bit like that, I like to break out the face masks and kind of try and combat them basically. But you guys all know I love a face mask anyway. This one seemed super interesting. It has some of the weirdest ingredients I have ever known in a face mask ever before. It has cayenne pepper, it has cinnamon, I think it has nutmeg. It has a lot of things that if you got this in your eye, you would not be happy. You would be screaming the house down. It basically comes in a powder. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a powder and you mix one tablespoon of that with one tablespoon of water and it kind of makes this like 
foam, kind of like this green foam, which I then use a makeup brush to apply to my skin. And then you leave it for about 40 minutes until the green dries on your face and you can kind of see all the different patches and areas where it starts to dry. It stings like nothing I have ever experienced on my face before. When I first did this, I was having a relaxing bath, I put this on my face and I was like, holy crap, this is painful. I was sure I was gonna take this mask off and have no skin on my face left. The kind of burning sensation lasted for about five minutes and then after that, it kind of disappeared. And when you've got it on your face for 40 minutes, I mean, five minutes out of 40 is not so bad. But it was that weird kind of pain where you're like, I like that it feels painful because I feel like it's doing something. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I think I've probably used this about five times now. Um, and every time I've used it, I look at my skin the next day and I'm like, that has honestly worked. Like, I can't explain to you how good this face mask is. Yes, it's a bit more fiddly and it's not as easy as squeezing a face mask from a tube into your hand and putting it on your face. But I really honestly feel like this does the job. It's not called the problem solver for nothing. This is gonna last you a while as well. Like this is a really big pot. I would say I'm about a third gone through. Um, and although I've had the face mask on about four or five times, I've also put it on Alfie, I've also put it on Poppy. Basically everyone that's come to my house have been like, you need to try this face mask. Problem solver, solves all problems, hurts a little bit, but it's totally worth it. It smells like, oh my God, I breathed it in. My nose is on fire. Oh my God. <coughs> okay, I'm good. I'm good. Right, so that is all my skincare done. I have Oh my god, I've just realised I have so many other things to talk about and I'm already like 30 minutes into this video. What am I gonna do? This next thing is really random and I don't actually know if I've ever put a toothpaste into a favourites video before. Um, but, to be fair, I never really have favourite toothpastes. We just use toothpaste because, you know, we have to. And yeah, we have lots of different variations but essentially they all do the same job, blah blah blah. However, I really like this toothpaste and I wanted to share it with you because so many of you ask me how my teeth are so white. I once whitened my teeth when I was 21. No, 20? I was 21, so back in 2011, I whitened my teeth. It was like an at-home whitening kit, it wasn't like a one-time thing. I didn't even complete the course, I think I did it about three or four times. But my teeth are very white. Um, and I honestly think it could be my toothpaste. Right now, I do think my teeth are whiter than they've been in a really long time. And the toothpaste I've been using is the Oral-B 3D White Brilliance Whitening Toothpaste. I just thought I'd throw that in there because, uh, a lot of you ask me about what I use on my teeth. I'm using this on my teeth and I really like it. And, bonus, I actually think it's whitened my teeth, which... I didn't think it would, in all honesty. I think you can get quite a lot of different Oral-B ones, but this is just the Oral-B 3D White Brilliance. But they've got lots of different ones, I don't know. Let me know if you've tried this, and if it's made your teeth whiter, but I honestly do think it has. And I'm not just saying that, I actually, I genuinely think it, it's made my teeth whiter. So, from me to you, toothpaste, whitening toothpaste. So the last three favourites are kind of my random favourites, but they're all TV programmes. For me, January was the month of TV series. Uh, in that really weird, awkward time be between Christmas and New Year, where you're a bit like, oh my god, ugh, I don't want to like work right now, but I, all we're doing is kind of watching TV and eating food. Probably one of the best times of the whole year, if you ask me. But I watched a lot of TV, I got into a lot of TV series. It made me really unmotivated and I probably didn't get as much done as I would have liked because I was watching a lot of TV series. But that doesn't matter because now I can share them with you and now you can watch them and be unproductive too. First one is Call the Midwife. Louise has been watching this for years and I never have, what well, I've never, what I never have watched it. I haven't watched it. Fun fact, for a while when I was younger, I did think I actually wanted to be a midwife. Then I realised it was a little more gory than I thought. 
so no, that didn't happen. It is such an amazing TV program. It's so interesting. I honestly think I've learned so much about midwifery and pregnancy and birth and just things about history. Like it's set in the 50s and 60s, I think. 40s, 50s, 60s. Um, and it's just really interesting, great cast, great storylines, pulls at your heartstrings. Because it's set in the old school era, it's really like cosy. At the moment, I am watching series four and series five at the same time, which is really silly, but I can't not watch the new ones, but I still have catching up of the other ones to do. But if you want a new TV series to watch, watch Call the Midwife. Series one to three are on Netflix, and then series four I got from iTunes, and series five is currently on the television. So the other TV series that I was completely obsessed with through January was Screen Queens. Um, I got into this because Mark Ferris told me to watch it, I think. Did he? I can't remember. Um, PLL ended, Screen Queens started. And I was like, this looks interesting. It's done by the same people that do American Horror Story. You guys know how much I love American Horror Story. Therefore, I was like, I am gonna love this. And I did. I have to admit, the first two, three episodes, I didn't really get into it as much as I wanted to. But once I got onto episode like four and five, I was completely hooked. I was watching hours and hours of it a day. Um, it's very slapstick. It's borderline offensive, so if you're very easily offended, I wouldn't watch it. Um, it's very funny, the acting is great, the cast is great, and I just feel like it's quite a cool mixture of like PLL and American Horror Story, and that is why I loved it, because I felt like the two had come together and made a baby. Once I'd finished watching Scream Queens, I actually said to Mark, right, what do I watch now? Because I finished Scream Queens and I need something else to watch. And he said, you should watch Luther. Um, I'd seen a lot of people were watching Luther. I didn't know how many series there were, but I thought, okay, sure, I'll start watching this. Tried to watch it on my own, and you guys know how much I love scary things, and I could not watch it on my own, because it feels too damn real. I was like, no, I can't watch this on my own. I started watching it, I was like, no, 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 I'm gonna have to watch this with Alfie. So I waited and me and Alfie watched Luther together as like our TV program in the evenings. But I do have to tell you, I've never had as many nightmares like in any space of time as I have had whilst watching Luther. It's basically about a police detective or a police police officer who um, is solving all these crimes but he's really cool and oh, you just kind of have to watch it but it's set in London and all the scenarios and the crimes he's solving are really creepy and just make you go oh my god that could actually happen like that's scary. I think at the moment we're about halfway through series three um, and it's amazing. I've basically been telling everybody to watch it. It's honestly the sort of TV program where you're screaming at the television or you, you're like biting your nails and like gripping the seat that you're sat in. It's so good. So highly recommend. That's three TV series that I've pretty much nearly got through in January, which is so bad, but so good at the same time. I feel like this could be the longest favourites video I have ever filmed, and I, I'm starting to actually feel my voice disappear, and I don't know if that's because I just inhaled cayenne pepper, or if it's because I've been talking for so long. Either way, I am going to leave it here. Um, let me know, as always, what you guys have been loving in the comments. Don't leave any spoilers for any of the TV series that I mentioned, but let me know if you've been watching any of them, or if you love any of them as much as I do. I haven't actually addressed the fact that there are now 10 million of us on this channel. Like, that is insane. Insane. I can't even tell you how grateful and thankful I am that you guys have subscribed, that you're here and you watch my videos and uh, I love you. I love you all very much and thank you so much. That is 10 million. It's crazy. You can see the moment I hit 10 million over on Alfie's vlog channel. Um, if you just search pointless blog vlogs 10 million or something it might come up. Um, 
But yeah, I haven't actually spoken about that because last week's video was a pre-recorded video when I didn't have 10 million. So now I can say thank you so much, guys. It's just, it's crazy. Okay, I'm gonna go now, but give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Um, let me know in the comments what videos you would really like me to do this year because I'm making a list and I'm going through all the videos I really want to film but I would be really interested to know if any of you have anything specific that you would really really like to see um, in which case I can add it to my list uh, but yeah I've really enjoyed having this little chin wag with you talking through all my bits and pieces um, and my favourite TV programmes and uh, yeah, I will see you again next week. Bye, love you.